Wikipedia has a list showing that there was uh, 70, 79 times the world was predicted to end before the turn of the 20th century. That means those are just the number of predictions that had already failed before 1901, and there have been seven or several more to, fought to fail since then. The prophecies of the Bible are just as bad. For example, Jesus failed to meet any of the criteria required of the Jewish Messiah. He didn't gather the people from exile. He didn't return them to Israel. He didn't rebuild the Jewish temple. He didn't establish world peace. And he didn't convert the world, the whole world, to believe in one God. He was supposed to do all of these things before he could be called Messiah. And he can't have done them after he died because he was supposed to be an invulnerable warlord who can't be killed. But the story starts out wrong and just keeps getting wronger. Christians like to tell me how Jesus was prophesied by Isaiah in the story that says, A virgin shall conceive a child and shall bear a son and will call his name Emmanuel. It doesn't matter that no one ever referred to Jesus as Emmanuel because Christians think that that, mean, that name sort of means the kind of guy they think Jesus was. And it doesn't matter that the word for virgin actually meant unmarried maiden and not necessarily virgin. What should matter is that there's no way this passage could refer to Jesus. The story is that in around 730 BC, the king of Judah was concerned that he would be overrun by Syrian and Israeli forces. You notice that the headlines never change in this part of the world? You have three different religions of peace all following the same God of loving forgiveness, and yet they've been at war continuously with each other, each since their inception. Anyway, Isaiah eases the king's mind with a prophecy. God said, don't worry about it, it's not going to happen. Isaiah said that this maiden would bear a son, and there was nothing special or magical about this kid. Uh, but that once the child was old enough to choose honey over curds, that by that time the enemy kingdoms would fail and the king of Judah would know that he was safe by the time this kid reached the age of reason. Now Isaiah could have said, just give it a couple years, you'll see. But being a prophet means that he has to drag everything out into weird parables. So he wasn't talking about Jesus. He was talking about an unremarkable kid who would have lived and died several centuries before Jesus. And that means that the New Testament is wrong too. Because the book of Matthew 123 says that an angel visited Joseph in a dream and simply recited the line from Isaiah 714 as if that counts as a fulfilled prophecy. So whoever wrote uh, Matthew didn't read or understand Isaiah. But that's not the worst of it. Because Bible prophecies never fail on the small scale. They fail every way they can. When the maiden in question turned out not to be pregnant, Isaiah got her pregnant himself. Because, you know, somebody had to do it. Then he forgot to name the kid Emmanuel. It seems that God came in and said, Isaiah, name the kid Maharshal... <laughs> to try this again. Mahar Shalal Hashbaz. Yep, let's try it again. Mahar Shalal Hashbaz. Can you see why an old religion was founded on that name? So Isaiah literally fucked up his own prophecy. <laughs> but that's still not the worst of it because 2 Chronicles 28 says that the prophecy failed again because Syria and Israel did attack and overruled or overpowered the king of Judah, wiping out hundreds of thousands of women and children, uh, wiping out the royal family and carting away all of their booty. So what Isaiah said would come to pass, didn't. And what God said would not come to pass, did. <laughs>